Uh, what I'd done in Liverpool, I'd written, um, I was a features sub, and another guy and I ran the features department, there were only two of us, and it was a daily newspaper, and what I did, I went and interviewed people um, about my own age, people like Roger McGuff, Mike McCartney, um, artists, all kinds of people like that, and I sent those to the standard, and they said, come and do that for us, because Maureen Cleave had been there before me, and she'd got married so that there was a gap for someone. And I told them, they said, what are your hobbies? I said, well, I'm really obsessed with rock and roll and pop. They said, oh, really? Oh, well, well, come and do that for us. So I got this fantastic job of um, writing about popular music and everything else. And I stretched it out in the end. It, at first, it was mainly pop. But then by the end, it was Muhammad Ali or, or whoever, you know. But in those days, I started the first Months and about a week after I joined, Brian Epstein died, and then three weeks later, four weeks later, I went on a magical mystery tour and followed the Beatles tour down to the West Country where you came from, and um, met Paul, which was really handy um, because it was sheer luck. Because I didn't know any, you know, I was, I was, you know, I was new to Fleet Street and didn't know anybody. I was nervous, very bad stammer. Couldn't I thought I've somehow got to talk to to the Beatles? But how do you do it? You know, because Fleet Street they all knew each other. They were, they sort of moved as a mob, and the Beatles knew them, and they were all mates. And they're staying in this hotel, I think in Dawlish, I think it was, someone like that. Anyway, the first night, and I'm sitting here, and they're sort of all over there. I think how am I going to get from here to there? You know, sort of like, I'd say, and there's an empty chair next to me. And Paul watching the sat down next to me, no else to say it. Oh, I better say something. So <laughs> I said, uh, I know your dad. He said, Oh, yeah. I said, Yeah, I know your dad. I met your dad. I know your brother. And uh, from that moment on, Paul took me up, which was great luck. I mean, it did change my life, probably. No, it didn't really, but you know, it, it, it certainly didn't hurt. And I was 26, and I think that was a great time to. Un the Evening Standard was a fantastic place to be because everyone read it in London. I didn't really care about outside London. In London, everyone read it. And it, was, it sort of set the pace for everything else. It was a great paper then, fantastic paper. Um, and so I was given this job and I grabbed it and ran with it. And, you know, and because I knew a lot about music, um, I was good at doing the interviews where most people in Fleet Street were older, and they weren't that interested, really. They wanted stories. I always wanted to talk about what records they were, and all that. I was really interested in it. Um, so that was really handy. And so I was a good person to go to for PR. So I get record company PRs. You know, someone's putting out a record. Who is it? Uh, Moody Blues, Justin Hayward. Mm, yeah. I'll talk to him, yeah, yeah. Or, but then I'd go after the big ones. I mean, I'd, I'd want, you know, a stone or a beetle, usually, uh, but I wouldn't get them. But you know, I got them quite a lot. Uh, and then, so there'd be this play between PRs and you all the time. I reckon that in a year, you'd, I'd like to say do 48 big interviews a year, and there'd be about 10 really good ones, and then about 20 that were pretty good, or 30, and then some that were not very good at all. And I'd think, oh God, you know, I lose my job or something, you know, but I never did. You know.